Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode we begin with the attempted launch of a rocket AJ-5 to orbit. We also have a double vanguard queued up and currently under construction. I have uh, unlocked the technology early AVISM probes which contains the Explorer core but that's going to take another 335 days. I've got a uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock in here right now and we've got first artificial satellite in one year and 87 days. So I think there might be just enough time to build one rocket with the Explorer core before that contract is up. So we'll have to keep that in mind. But for now we do not have that benefit, that light core. And we have to try these. We'll see how that goes. We've already outstripped the date for uh, Sputnik. Oh, I haven't configured this for Earth time. So, yeah, we're, we're way past Sputnik and even Explorer 1, so it's, uh, we're behind. We're, we're like some other country. It's fine. Ignition. And launch. Maybe we're like Canada using, using Cape Canaveral. You know, because Americans are nice to Canadians, right? Canadians are sort of Kerbal, right? I say that I'm going to be spending Christmas in in Canada uh, with uh, relatives, so yeah, Canada is on my mind. Okay, good burn on the first stage. All right, RCS on and separation. Make sure this is settled down. It is. Ignition. Okay, the AJ-10 is a go. This does not have the newer instruments, unfortunately. Just uh, temperature and barometer. But the newer instruments are heavier, so... Slightly less delta-V on the third stage with them. Well, it's still gonna be tight. It'll all depend on the error B and whether this actually finishes its burn, of course. Okay, beginning rotation. Okay. Shutting these down. Separation. And, well, uh, why aren't these thrusters working? They're enabled. Oh, uh, we've got the same problem. Okay, it's not... Okay, so I'm going to quickly go back to tracking station and come back and hopefully it'll be alright, but it might be tumbling. Okay, well... Still very stable, thankfully. Um, activate engine. Nope, it won't let me throttle up. Push all the buttons. <laughs> Yeah, uh, okay. Oh, now it, now it lit. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I'm just not used to this. I'm not used to be treating this, treated this way. Darn it, that messed up the joke. Oh, man. Ah, uh, not quite. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, I mean, I, I totally blame the fact that we couldn't ignite at the right time. I mean, we were pointed at the horizon, we had enough time to burn, and we couldn't, couldn't ignite it in time for no good reason. Well, uncrewed speed record, but not the minimum perigee of 150 kilometers. Tropics. Okay, uh, I need to focus on it so that I can reach the instruments easier. Okay, log temperature. No, that's not one that we can do. Analyze telemetry. That is. So two signs for that. Pressure data. No. So it's just telemetry. And we're going to run out of power, so I just want to get the altitude record. And we do. Okay, so we definitely got the value of this mission back and more, but we didn't get orbit. Well, with our new science, I can unlock our capability to get even more science, 
magnetometer boom, magnet, uh, micrometeorite detector, orbital perturbation experiments, all good stuff. And that also should give us some upgrade points. I didn't spend the one that I used to up unlock the little probe parts. But yeah, let's increase that. And really we should put more in the science points as well. Okay, and th the will points definitely cost more than they used to. And it used to be like 10,000 a piece, now it's 30,000, so it's tough. Anyway, well, I'm gonna queue up another Rocket AJ-5 because it's like an itch that I just need to scratch at this point. Anyway, but uh, it does occur to me that our launch pad is going to be upgraded in 14 days, after which we'll be able to launch rockets that are capable of uh, being 40 tons and a little bit taller. So that's going to give us a little bit more leeway to like le reach the moon, I guess. I, I guess. We'll see. Um, that would be the next thing to do. I have no problem building rockets to reach orbit less than 20 tons, as long as they ignite when I want them to but yeah so rocket AJ-5 as backup and then hopefully we'll be able to do other things okay well I didn't wait for daylight this time I decided to just launch now I'm in a hurry okay uh, we're being beaten by a bunch of nations here okay so two Vanguard engines at the bottom of this otherwise it's the same rocket I wonder if there's any way that this AJ-10 is interfering with it. I thought it was the probe core that might be interfering with the upper stage, but I don't know. I have, I don't have any theories. We know this upper stage worked because it was like this, this the exact same upper stage that we had on our previous rockets, our early rockets. So we've ignited it before, so there's no good reason for it not to ignite right now. But anyway, that's just me using logic. Ignition. Oh, we've got a bad engine. Well. Uh, there's there's no way that's gonna work <laughs> all right all right um, I don't know if I should roll it back or just recover it I think I should just recover it I'll take the value I mean well I mean if I roll it back can we like if we roll it out again will it be a bad engine I guess this is the time to check that out huh all right uh, so uh, recover active vessel well it gave me it says it gave me funds back, but I don't trust it. It says it's recovering as well. Let me try and roll it out again and see about the engine. I don't know. Uh, this costs money, rolling it out all the time. But again, better to do with a cheaper rocket. Oh, it automatically ignited the one engine. Okay, well that doesn't work. Okay, first of all, let's just... Oh, it says activate. Um... Shut down the engine. It's nice to know that you had an ignition in you, but... Okay, that says activate engine, that says activate engine, but this still shows a kerosene measure. That's not right. There's too much that's not right about this. The problem is the cost of rolling out, which is actually more than the cost of the rocket. I think... I don't know if scrapping actually works. I, I don't have scrapyard right now, so... Probably doesn't. But I think at this point we should just scrap that puppy. It gives us some funds at least. And we'll just build a fresh one. Well, we've got two different models of the AJ-10. So just to change things up, maybe I'm... Oh, maybe I'll swap out this AJ-10. So the launch pad upgrade is finished. What's the next upgrade? 150 tons. 40 meters. Boy, they're really uh, going slow on us, aren't they? used to be you jump from 40 tons to 800 tons and then basically unlimited or 3,000 uh, 3, tons I forget but yeah alright fine well let's just get on with that one I know our budget is gonna be interesting eventually especially if we like manage to not make orbit and I wish I could spend more on upgrade points but that's not happening okay let's roll out another rocket AJ-5 we've been through this the question is whether I can ignite that engine in time. And of course, test flight. Alright, throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. And launch. And off we go again. Well, I could go a little higher on this side, I suppose. 
That'll give us more time to have a bad ignition. Well, that wasn't particularly higher, but anyway. Uh, let's get on with it. Separation. Okay, very stable. Ignition. I've got a different idea. I've got to keep the throttle up. We'll actually expend all of the HTP on this stage. Okay, staging. Okay, and... Ignition. Okay, well that worked. As long as I don't throttle down, I suppose. Now it's just a matter of this pointing in the right direction and continuing on. It might have been just a little bit too early on the ignition for this. Oh no, we made it. Okay. It reads we've made it, we're just checking for a stable orbit. I'm gonna throttle down now. Oh, it doesn't let me throttle down, actually. Um, it doesn't let me turn off RCS either. So I guess I can't change throttle on this core except sometimes, because we have throttled up before. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand. I mean, if you say that this uh, core doesn't allow throttling, that's great, but somehow it ignited the engine sometimes. I mean, it's weird. Okay, so if this all checks out, then we're going to be able to bring the double Vanguard back in, and maybe we'll add a sounding rocket payload to it or something. We'll check uh, take, check our contracts to see what we can do. Okay, we've got it. First artificial satellite, not well, our first artificial satellite. Everybody else had them before us, but anyway, so we got funds, reputation, all is well. Now, uh, I mean, we're not going to have a different path than the other mission, and we don't have the other instruments. We've still got the thermometer and barometer, so I'm going to blatantly assume that this is going to run out of electric charge before it gets to any biome that we have not done yet, and we'll just let it be. It is going to hang out here. So taking a look at the contracts, these sounding rocket contracts are pretty pitiful as far as their payout. Um, first solar powered satellite is much much better and I think we can do that maybe 300 kilometer periapsis might be more difficult it's yeah that might be tricky and it only gives us a year but better than these it only give us 90 days and of course crude is right out Lunar flyby, that's optimistic. Hey, what about the tracking station? Anyway, I'll pick this up. We should be able to do it in a year. We've got a lot of funds to work with. But tracking system upgrades, patch, con we need patch conics. Orbits visible, patch conics visible. 300,000. I don't know what the vehicle assembly building does. Science limit here is only 25 right now and 500,000 for 50. Well, at least we've got the launch pad upgrade already started, right? Right? Right. So, I'll take the patched conics. And then, what about the mission planning bit? Flight planning. 200,000 for that. I don't want to have to do a lunar impact or mission and just guess. So, we'll request that upgrade. And let's bring the double vanguard in and slap two solar panels to the upper stage. Uh, not rush uh, build, let us edit. Wow, they're, when they say tiny solar panel, they mean it. This isn't exactly a big stage. It didn't have a minimum power requirement, did it? I doubt it. So any solar panels will work, right? Can generate solar power. Well, it could. 
I mean, they're pretty expensive and they take a lot of extra time. 80 days and then two solar panels you put here, suddenly 84 days. Four extra days just for two tiny, tiny, tiny solar panels. Okay, so we'll have to launch this steeper, make sure we've got a 300 kilometer sort of situation before we get to the Araby. Trouble is we haven't really practiced with the Vanguard. Actually, we haven't actually gotten off the ground with the Vanguard yet, so that's a bit of a trick. All right, a dawn launch sounds good. Of course, we'll be pointing directly at the sun. That's not so good. We do have a sounding rocket payload on this. I uh, should have taken that out since we don't have a contract for it. Okay, anyway, I guess it'll be part of the test. All right, ignition. We got two of them this time. And launch. This rocket doesn't uh, experience quite as high thrust weight ratios as the previous one. Okay. And separation. RCS on. Uh oh. Go away, fairing. Well, we might just have to light the AJ 10 to make that happen. So we'll have the same plan as last time, we're going to run out the HTP on this stage. Let's see, it says it can generate solar power, so it's convinced. The key is the 300 kilometer periapsis now. I mean, right now we've only got 280, but yeah, if we've only got 280, we've only got 280. except. I could use the HTP on that stage to increase it a bit. Okay, separation. And ignition. But it was mainly a test of the Vanguard engines. Hopefully test like got some data out of it. The periapsis can never be lower than your current altitude, so we know we're not going to get to 300. Ooh, not even close. Okay, no, uh, shut down. Oh, I can't shut down. Oh, wait, or I could do that. <laughs> I can hold down the N key <laughs> to cancel it out. Okay, um, it's time warp. Um, no connection. Hopefully we'll have a connection at, but we might be rotated retrograde by the time we get to apoapsis. That's actually doing the opposite of what I want. Yeah, that's because we're slightly retrograde now. Okay, so that's probably a bust. We're not really even recharging, are we? Because we're constantly pointing at the sun. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work out per particularly well. Nope, there it goes. Oh, Savannah. We, we had a different bi biome right there, Savannah. I haven't seen that before. But... We didn't catch it. Okay, still an orbital flight, you know, it's only our second one. I don't think we're gonna break any records though. Alright, we'll have to review this sort of design. I think we need something completely different. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, I've had some escapades in rocket design, uh, but this has really taken the cake, and the numbers are just all over the place. So we've unlocked up to 60 ton capacity on the launch pad and I wanted to make use of that so you can see the uh, up to 60 tons and 30 meters but um, our possibilities are curious <laughs> initially I called this Radgar because we had the RD engines that's where the rad comes from at the bottom two of them and then a Vanguard on the second stage now I don't know if you can use a Vanguard on the second stage but we're gonna try eventually it depends though. Take a look at this. We've got 4,000 cost on the rocket, which is nice, but we've got a rollout cost of 15,000. That's a lot of cost. <laughs> that's, that's a lot to bite. I don't know what it takes to reduce that rollout cost, but that's a pretty big rollout cost. 
Um, we, we need to cut down on our staff when it comes to rolling these bloody things out. Uh, so, uh, curious aspects of this design. First of all, uh, stacking these tanks. Y you can see from the textures that these are actually separate tanks here. Well, that's because I couldn't use our prefab tooled um, tank size because that's actually 8.9, well, it's actually 9 meters, so it's too big. Um, actually, this one ought to be too big too. Maybe you could cut down on costs a little bit. But we'd have to underutilize that and hurt our Delta V. But it's a Vanguard rocket, so what can we do? Okay, so that'll be cheaper and the Delta V not great. We we're only carrying a 0.1 ton sounding rocket load there. So that's what we've got up there. But yeah, uh, since we couldn't use the big tank for these to uh, make it more cost efficient we we're using the small ones you know the ones that we had on the second stage with the AJ-10 and just stacking them so the net effect of tooling is to make very Kerbal rockets I'm gonna just have clusters of 1.2 meter tanks I mean the only American rocket that's vaguely similar to this sort of thing is the Saturn 1 of course uh, there were proposed things uh, among the Russian rockets the Soviet rockets, but of course the only one there that really took flight was Proton, um, where you have this sort of clustering of tanks because they wanted to keep it a certain size. Anyway, but uh, we, we're not using Tank 3 yet, I haven't unlocked that, maybe I should, but it is expensive to go 25,000 there. One thing, and what really got me started on recording, because I'm still in the design phase here, uh, is a curious fact that uh, while this RD-108 is 190000 to purchase, 190000 to purchase, 190000 to purchase this RD-107, this RD-107 from the stock extensions mod is 13600 So somebody has mispriced that or mispriced the other ones. Because I, I wish it was 13600 but now I figure that this is probably cheating. And that's annoying so yeah that needs to be fixed and stock extensions is you know one of the basic mods for RP0 RP1 so otherwise I would love to have especially the LR105 but that's 92,000 to unlock that's a significant expenditure for us I don't know whether we need this rocket yet or not I'll just uh, keep it on standby for now it has promise. The question is whether we can light the Vanguard in flight. So that will be a question mark for us to deal with. And actually, you know what? We're really close to just needing one core. Mm, I wish I could reduce it so that we could just use one guidance unit for the whole thing. I'll think about that as well. Oh, it occurred to me that you might have wondered why I didn't just make these into boosters instead of just um, strap on uh, actual tanks. In other words, uh, this is all a unit, it's all one stage. These are not actually boosters, maybe that wasn't very clear. Uh, the reason why I'm not using them as boosters is because they wouldn't be, ab in be able to independently propel this uh, off the ground on their own. They need the center engine and the center engine has a limited burn time of 2 minutes and 25 seconds so it can't be lit for an extra 2 minutes and 25 seconds once those goes off, go off anyway so we can't do that and um, yeah and besides the center engine on its own once these goes off, uh, go off uh, probably wouldn't have a thrust weight ratio of 1 for the whole thing because this one up here has only 1.5 or to 1.65 in vacuum so that's why that's why they're just uh, stuck on there and they are not staging off as boosters okay so making another attempt at the solar powered satellite I have decided to make a few changes to the double vanguard I've decided to remove instruments remove the sounding rocket payload that we were carrying for no reason up there and also extend the first stage by an additional one of these tanks so it's got 2 minutes and 15 seconds now. The thing is, our rollout cost seems to have gone up. I could have sworn it was like only 4,000 for this rocket. Now it's 6,591. 
It's not that much heavier. And I'm just wondering about the whole rollout cost thing. It's just mind-boggling to me how, how expensive the rollout cost is. In the meantime, early avionics and probes should complete and then we'll be in a good position as far as that's concerned. We'll have smaller probes and that means that uh, we can get them higher. That's always nice. Right now we're just carrying that one sounding rocket guidance unit or whatever um, telemetry unit, sorry. It doesn't really guide anything and uh, that's a little bit heavier than some of these other probes. After this we'll have two more shots at the first solar powered satellite contract. It all depends on whether we're going to be killed by test flight or not I think at this point because we've tested this rocket before. Okay so I really need to send this up higher this time. Give ourselves enough buffer so that we can beat that 300 kilometer mark. Ignition. And both engines fail. Wait. Um, I don't know why it's red. Well, I'll launch anyway. I don't understand. Maybe they're gimbling? We do have fins. No, their gimbling is fine. So why are the engines red? Hmm. I'll take a look at test flight once we get into a decent situation. ISP seemed fine, thrust seemed fine. Just trying to mess with me. Failed to ignite. Could have fooled me. Weird. So if it thinks they've failed to ignite and test flight thinks they've already messed up, can it do something bad to us now? Or are we like immune? Anyway, we did waste some fuel just sitting around there. Alright, uh, RCS on staging. Okay, now follow up and ignition. Does still read us as a solar powered satellite, right? Yep. Not giving myself a huge amount of margin here though. It should be enough time. Okay, well hold on a sec. We don't need to do that yet. We need to coast for a bit. Reason we have to get through all this is so that this doesn't bump the next stage and I have to keep the throttle up for reasons. Okay, staging, and all right, ignition. It's just a matter of our orientation and whether it's going to pass the required numbers. Oh, man. Okay, keep going, keep going, yeah. RCS, you're our only hope. Good rocket launch. Plenty of Delta V, just a little bit off. Alright, well, we'll have to try this again next time. I think I've had enough. We've had some good orbital flights. We just have to nail what we are trying to do. We've got an uncrewed altitude record. Can we get another uncrewed altitude record? Possibly we have to actually go back to the... No, no, yeah, we can. We've got a lot of them. They're like every 100 kilometers. 800, 900,000. We're not going to pass 2,000, though. So we've, we've got all the sweet ones. So we've got some funds back. But yeah, I think this will do it for me for this episode. And we will continue on next time. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.